Hey, it's Mike with Reef Reviews. Today I have the Samsung S24 Plus on the left and the new iPhone 16 Pro Max on the right. I think this is a better comparison than the S24 Ultra because the S24 Plus is comparable in size and shape. The iPhone Max is a little taller. Not by much. But I do like the width of the new iPhone. I really like the size of the iPhone. And like the looks of the iPhone as well. It's got the new camera button on the side. Everything else looks the same as the, the 15s. And this is my, I don't know, probably fifth time I've tried to change to Apple. And I really thought I was gonna do it this time. I like the screen. The screen is very comparable to the Samsung. A little more clarity with the Samsung, better color, reproduction, and clarity. But this is the best screen I've seen ever on an iPhone. So it is better than the 15 Pro Max, or the 15s. Um, what else? Cameras, very similar actually. Sometimes I get a little better pictures photos with the Samsung, uh, but usually it's better with the, with the Apple. Uh, videos, of course, are always better on Apple. I wish Samsung would get closer to that, but the photos are pretty close. But sometimes the photos are better on the Samsung because at least after it does its um, reproduction, Samsung software somehow modifies the picture to upgrade it to make it look better. So sometimes it does turn out better because of that image processing. Um, yeah, similar look. So this is the, the Samsung. I'm recording this with an iPad, which I'm also testing out. And I'll do a review on that too. So the camera's not as clear on this one. So this is Samsung's yellow gold version. And this is Apple's new desert tan goldish version. So anyway, I love the colors. I love the shape, size, everything of the iPhone. But again, I've tried and I've had so many glitches and so many issues. And I just can't switch again. Sorry, Apple. <laughs> I keep trying every, pretty much every year. I'll go to the store and I'll test out and compare. And I could never change because of the screen and the photos weren't as good as I thought they should be on the Apple. <laughs> but this year I came really close. And I know it's only been three days, but in these three days, I mean, it, it took me two full days just to get everything switched over and fix all the glitches and errors I was having. I mean, it took me probably an hour just to create an account because Apple would not verify with my actual cell phone number. It said it was invalid when it was accurate. And I tried other numbers, wouldn't work. Then it locked out my account on different, so I tried like three email accounts and it keeps locking it out because I couldn't verify with the phone. So I anyway, had to contact support and fix all that. So that took a couple hours. <laughs> And once I did get everything on, it's transferred over to the iPhone. I had contacts, 300 or so, 330 contacts on the phone, but only 50 or 40 would upload to iCloud and to the iPad. And it seriously took me a half a day to try to figure all that and trying to get them. You know, at first I took hours trying to get the contacts transferred from Android to Apple. And then it wouldn't upload or sync cor correctly with iCloud. So it took me hours more to try to, I mean, the iPhone won't even let you delete your contacts. I mean, you can't, you can only do it one by one. You can't even select numerous contacts and then hit delete. You can only do one by one. And I couldn't delete them on iCloud because, well, they weren't uploading to iCloud. So I finally found a secret way to delete all contacts underneath a secret setting somewhere. And I can't, I can't even tell you where I found that. I can't even go back to find it myself. 
which is a whole nother problem. Why is everything so difficult? Settings is in different places. You can't go to settings from your apps. Um, they finally made it so your icons would, are movable on the home screen. But when you move, so you can move them over here, but when you move, like say this icon and move it down here, all these icons will move over there. So I only want to move one icon. They finally allow us to do that. But when you move one icon, you move all the rest after it. It's so annoying. So, but I, I like that you can at least move things around like that, at least. But it's a pain and takes forever to get to get, to get that like, like that. <laughs> Um, what else? Glitches. So I've already had the first day I would touch on icons or touch the back button up top and nothing would happen. I mean, I would be touch, touch, touching nothing. I would have to wait. And some people say when you touch near the camera button on the glass, that it frees, that there's would, so if your hand barely touches it and you're trying to touch other things, so sometimes they'll go, it'll, it'll freeze your screen so you can't touch things. Oh, how do I go back here? <laughs> it's so difficult. Okay, back to home screen. I know, I've been with Samsung for a since the S1. So things are so simple and easy and settings are where they should be, easy to access. You have a back button here or you can do iPhone similar thing. So you can do gestures and the gestures work all the time. If I go like this, it goes back on all apps. When I do it on the iPhone, only 50% of the apps will let you actually swipe left. I don't know what the actual number is, but half the time it works. It should work all the time, Apple. Seriously. Uh, other glitches, so screen would, would freeze. I touch, you know, I thought maybe that's because I've just installed new apps and it's, you know, using its little amount of memory. Honestly, you guys make good chips, make it fast. You, you still need to upgrade your memory. I was having freezing problems, screen freezing problems. I don't know if I was touching this while trying to touch some icons, but I don't think my hand is always touching that when my screen was freezing. Um, Second day, screen freezing issues stayed the same. And I had the new issue. I could not call up Siri. I could not use voice to text, which I use all the time. And that's another issue I need to get into. And so I had to restart the phone. I've never had that problem with a Samsung, like ever. And I didn't expect that, all these glitches and problems with a new iPhone that has the better screen and a better camera than any of their phones in the past. Um, what else? I do like some of the features, like I can use face lock out for my, my browser. And you can kind of see, so Apple, Samsung. I don't know if you can see it on this poor quality of iPad camera, but it is a little clear. And I really miss the thumbprint. Oh, it's already unlocked. I really miss the thumbprint. You know, Apple should have thumbprint like they do on their iPad. This iPad I'm using, you touch it, on the power button, it has a fingerprint reader. Why not do that on your iPhone? Face unlock works, but you have to actually be looking at your phone or have it up put towards your face. This one, I can just touch the touch the fingerprint fingerprint reader when it's laying down or on the side of my bed or it's a super dark or whatever, and it, it works good. So I was kind of missing that, but. I don't know if you can see the difference here. The text is brighter and I don't have brightness yet. The iPhone brightness is max, this is maximum brightness. 
Okay, both phones are max bright. So words are definitely brighter. Maybe I've got, yeah, I do have the text a little bigger, but it's still, everything is brighter on the, on the Samsung. Um, for a while I was kind of thinking, wow, well, maybe it's better on the, on the Apple, but it's just because the screen is a little bigger, so I'm getting a bigger image. So, which I do like that, I love it, it's the perfect width. So Samsung, take note for next time, make your phone a little wider. <laughs> and I don't like phones going tall, but I do like them wider. Not as wide as the S24 Ultra, which I did try, and I have other videos on the S24 Ultra you can check out. But uh, anyway, well this isn't such a brief review, but uh, um, I think that covers all my, my issues. But some, you know, some complaints, you know, just, just trying to find, you know, settings are only, settings for apps are only in the settings menu. Uh, yeah, iCloud is a pain. Everything has to upload. Oh, I, I cannot get MP3s on an iPhone. I tried iTunes, I tried Apple Music, uh, iCloud.com iCloud app on my Windows computer. <laughs> it just doesn't work. Um, I mean, not a big deal because everything's pretty much online and you have all these streaming apps now. That was one issue. Um, another issue is like, you can go to, s like you can turn off your, your Wi-Fi. Was it Wi-Fi or cellular? Anyway, you can turn off your networks in the pull-down menu, but apparently it's not really off. It's either Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. And you have to go to settings to actually to actually see it's still on. You have to go to settings to actually turn off your Wi-Fi. Now your Wi-Fi is actually off, so it doesn't even matter here. See when you, get, you see this? So if you touch here and drop down, it's not actually off. It's only off when you see the line going through it. Why? Put it here. I want my stuff off, make it go off. Not this halfway nonsense. Oh, what else? You know, settings is a problem. Swiping to go back. I mean, you have this big phone and most, a lot of times you have to only hit that little back button at the very top of the screen. Just make it, make it work all the time, like on Android. It works all the time when you swipe, and you can go forward this way. Kind of like, I think Safari does do that, but... Um, what else? Do, do, do. Yeah, I had one other complaint to talk about, and I kind of forgot it, so... Um, anyway, let me know what you guys think. Sorry, Apple, I tried. And every time I try, and I put all my apps and all my stuff on there, it's the most frustrating experience ever. I mean, I've, I've probably wasted two, two and a half days getting everything to work on here, and now realizing that, oh, here's the other gripe, big, big gripe. So, keyboards, such a pain. Google Keyboard, um, anyway, I've tried Google Keyboard. This one is Apple Keyboard. Uh, Google, no, that's Apple. Google Keyboard, Gboard. And the best one was, was, was Microsoft. <laughs> so... My biggest complaint is, if you want to use, even Google, if you want to use Google Translate inside the keyboard and touch microphone, it only puts it up here. You cannot use voice to text inside the Translate box, like you can on Android. Why Google, or why iPhone? I don't know. And the dictation is kind of slow on my Samsung 
it's super fast and more accurate. And I can use voice to speech, voice to text inside the box here. So anyway, oh, and then you still can't, you cannot adjust the size of any of those the Microsoft, the Gboard, or Apple's is locked. I mean, they control, they limit you. Why? Stop the control, <laughs> stop the limitations. Let us make our phone how we want. I mean, a keyboard adjusting the size, I would like to make it taller. I can on my other phone. <laughs> Gboard, I, it's, uh, yeah, anyway. So enough of the gripes, enough of the complaints. I am impressed with the looks of the phone. The color's nice. The back, I wish it's kind of, sometimes pinkish, but usually it's tan, and sometimes white outside, but it's kind of a copper gold, not really their old gold color. I like their old gold color better. I thought this would be the same. So yeah, there you have it. And I was happy to finally be able to use the magnetic for mounting my phone in, on a magnet in my car. But I just can't deal with all the other issues. So anyway, again, this is Mike with Brief Reviews. Please subscribe and leave your comments. Take care.